Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Shack. To start today, I'd like you to look at some straight line graphs and write down their equations. And you can do that using the gradient and the y-intercept. So pause the video, try these two, scroll down, pause the video, try those two, and so on. If you're unsure, then I'm going to talk about the first one in some detail. So every straight line graph, except one special case that I'm going to talk about, can be written in the form y equals mx plus c. And this m is the gradient. And this c is the y-intercept. So once you've remembered that, it's not so bad to write down these lines. Because if I look at this one, first one on the top left, the intercept is equal to zero because it's where it crosses the x, the uh, y-axis, sorry, it's actually the y-intercept. And the gradient, well, if I go, I can pick any triangle I want. If I go along one, I go up one. The rise over the run is just one. And that means the equation of this line is y equals x. For this next one, it's got the same gradient of 1, but actually the y-intercept is 1. So it's y equals x plus 1. This one, gradient this time is 2, because it's 2 over 1, and the y-intercept is minus 1. y equals 2x minus 1. Next one, this time I've got a run of 2 for a rise of 1. So it's y equals a half x, and in this case, the y-intercept is 2. This one, this is where you have to start being careful, because actually I've got a run of 1 and a rise of minus 1. So this gives me a negative gradient. It's going to be minus 1, because it's minus 1 over 1. So I'm going to get y equals minus x plus 1. Sometimes this is written as 1 minus x. Both of these are OK. The next one. Now, again, I've got this gradient of minus 1, but it goes through 4. So this is y equals minus x plus 4. Occasionally written as y plus x equals 4. But I'm looking for this one, really. Another negative gradient. So it's always good to be able to distinguish between a positive gradient and a negative gradient. And this one, run of 1, rise of minus 2. y equals minus 2x plus 2, because the y-intercept is 2. Next one. This is the special case, because actually I've got an infinite gradient here. So what am I going to put in? I've got to remember, actually, it's a vertical line, it's got a special equation, it's x equals 4. It's the one that doesn't fit into the y equals mx plus c category. Next one. This one actually does fit into y equals mx plus c category, but it's more easily recognised just as y equals 4. Notice the gradient here is 0, because if I go along 1, I go up 0. So I can write down 0x plus 4, but that simplifies just to y equals 4. Slightly trickier one here. Remember, I could draw my triangle however I like. I go along 3 and down minus 1. So it's y equals minus a third, x minus 4. And the last two that we're going to look at, okay, just... Make sure it goes through the point. So actually, there, that's looking pretty good. Back to being a positive gradient. It's going through 5. y equals a half x plus 5. And finally, um, where should I pick a point? Let's do it here. Go along 1, down minus 3. y equals minus a third x. And the y-intercept is minus 3, minus 3. Okay, hopefully you are happy with this, a useful reminder of being able to use y equals mx plus c, and we're getting the equation from the straight line graphs. We're going to be using that today. Today we're going to be looking at graphing inequalities next level, because now we're going to have the region, 
and we have to get back to working out the inequality. It's going to use what we just did in the starter, and it's going to use what we did last lesson. So I'm hoping that you're happy with both. Now, I think the first thing to do is think about the equation of the line. So this line here is y, is, sorry, not y, x equals 6. Now it's everything to the negative of this or to the left of this. So this inequality is not going to be x equals 6, but it's going to be x is less than or equal to 6. Notice we have a solid line, and so you include that less than or equal to. It can actually be on the line. And that's our answer. One more then, because you know this is only this is building quite quickly. But if you've understood the previous um, content, then hopefully you're happy already with this. Right, we've got a bit to do here. It's everything above this first horizontal line here. Now that's at minus four, there or thereabouts. So it's going to be y is greater than minus four because it's everything above the line. And it's not equal to it because it's a dotted line. So that's just that's just everything above the line. I've not I've not yet ruled out these points over here. So how do I do that? Well, I need to think about the other inequality because it's got to also satisfy that. And now it is below this line here. And this line is actually y equals minus x. You either recognize it as that line. Um, Actually, I just noticed the scale's a little bit strange. It's going up by twos, but that's okay. Or if you don't recognize it as y equals minus x, and you go along two, down two, the gradient's minus one, the intercept's zero, done. It's everything below that line, so it's actually going to be y is less than x. And note, we need to say that it satisfies both inequalities. So we really need to have this and here. Because it's not y is greater than minus 4 or y is less than x. That would be a different region. It's got to satisfy both inequalities. So if you're happy with that, actually, that is the main content for today's lesson. We're just going to look at slightly more complicated scenarios. Um, but, yeah, let's work our way through this. So the next question I want you to try is matching these graphs here. Pause the video. Try this out. Okay, now this is not the easiest task in the world because actually there are you can't get the y-intercept very easily from all the graphs. But I suppose a good shout is to get it from the ones we can. So there is only one line here with a gradient, uh, sorry, with a y-intercept of four, and that is number two. So C actually goes with number two, and then. Um, here, this one, I can see that I've got an intercept of 2. I, I should have said for number 2, actually. I can also say it works because y is greater or equal to, so it's going to be everything above the line. But I'm kind of, I don't even necessarily need to understand regions to be able to do this question, but I think it's going to, you know, we should also think about that. So this next one, I've got 2 as the y-intercept. It's a negative gradient, so it's going to be this one, a. Um, and y is less than or equal to that, so it's everything below the line. All right, a bit more to do now. So how are we going to figure out the other ones? Well, I think, first of all, I can rule out b, because I know there's no other one with a y-intercept of 2. So now it's probably just a case of figuring out which is which. Well, number 1 is everything above the line, so it's going to be a greater than 1. So d is going to go with 1. And finally, E is going to go with 3. Okay, it's a bit of process of elimination in this particular case, but I could have done a bit more. I could have worked out that the gradient was 2. Um, I could have even, have, I could have sort of thought about the, the line going on like this and going to minus 4. There are other techniques for working out exactly. I'm not too worried about those right now. I just wanted to give you like a little bit of a feel for what was going on. Okay, now it's all over to you. Can you work out the inequalities that describe each of these regions? I haven't shaded all of them, but there's a big capital R there to define the region that's going on. It's going to be everything enclosed like in an intuitive way. So everything above this line for number one, everything to the right of this line for number two, and so on. Pause the video, try each one. I'm going to talk about them as we go. 
So first one, we've got y equals 6. It's everything above the line. It's y is greater than or equal to 6. Here we've got x equals minus 6. It's everything to the right. It's going to be x is greater than six, minus 6. It's not going to be, it's not going to include the equal to part though. Next one, we've got y equals x and y equals minus x. And in both cases, it's, it's below the line. So it's going to be y is less than my, less than or equal to minus x and y is less than or equal to x. It's got to include both to get this region. Next one builds on 1 and 2. x is greater than 4, can't include 4, and y is less than or equal to 3, everything below that line. Notice it is halfway between two coordinates here, but hopefully you're okay with that. Number 5, bring in some more diagonal lines. Okay, the answer is here. Y is greater than minus 2, it's dotted. And then we've got Y is less than 8 minus X. You might have written X minus X plus 8 instead. Because it goes through 8, it's got a gradient of minus 1, and it's below that line. Next one. Here's the answer. It's getting, this is getting trickier now. So let's talk about this in a bit more detail. We've got it going through minus 4, the gradient of minus 1. It's below the line, so that's where this bit came from. Okay, this second line is probably the trickiest we've seen so far. Pick a point that's on the coordinates, like here, and then make sure it matches up with somewhere else where it touches uh, a corner point. You can see we're going along 2, up 5. You might write it as 5 over 2x. That's actually the same thing, but it is um, minus 8. Now, it's got to be, yeah, that's... Um, Actually, I think that's a two, four, six. Actually, I think this is a mistake on this one. This should be 10. Okay, correction going on. Next one. How about this region in between these lines? Here's the answer y is less than x plus 2, and y is greater or equal to x minus 4. Okay, three regions. You got what it takes? Hope so. Here's the answer. Y is greater than minus 3, because everything above this horizontal line. X is greater or equal to minus 7, because everything to the right, but including that minus 7 line. And then Y is less than X. That gives us this region here. Oof. Getting serious now. Okay, it's going to get more serious. Number 9. Y is greater or equal to minus 10. That's everything above this horizontal line. Y is less than or equal to 2x plus 10. That's this line here. The gradient is 2. It goes through 10. And we've also got y is less than or equal to 10 minus 2x. All of them can equal it because they're all solid lines. How about this one? This is actually an upside down, but an isosceles trapezium that's been enclosed. Okay, here. Wow. There are going to be, actually, this should have carried on. That's a typo from my end. Okay, but it's just this region here. Okay, it's going to be four inequalities. Y is less than or equal to two. Y is greater than minus six. And then we've got the diagonal lines to contend with. Y is greater than minus x minus 10. That's this one here. And Y is greater than x minus 10. If you're getting this, you are in good shape. There's a lot going on here. But we're not finished. How about these two? All right, the, t the toughest two, really, that we'll see. Um, y is less than or equal to 5x over 2 plus 6. We well, might write this as 5 over 2 times x plus 6. Okay, which line is that? Um, it's going to be this one here. Okay, and you have to carefully look at the gradient along 2, up 5, and it's going through 6. And then we get, oh, okay, I'll come back to this in a second. Come back to some of the trickier ones. Y is less than or equal to minus 2x over 5 plus 6. That's a similar thing. That's this line here. I go along 5 and down 2. That's where this has come from. Okay, what one should we look at now? So we've dealt with this one and this one. Um, I think there's a mistake here. This should not say that. That should say minus 6. That's okay. Um, 
because if I look at this line, I'm going along five and down two, so that's minus two x over five. I can see that it's going through minus six, actually. Yeah, I don't know where that 12 over five came from. I'm happy with that. And then I've got one more, and that's this line here. And that's, this is definitely the hardest line to see. So you can see, let's take it steady here. It's going to be y equals 5 over 2x. Now, I don't know where the intercept is. I know it's going to go on down here somewhere. So I'm going to call it plus c. And then I'm going to put a point in. This is like your... Actually, this is a standard approach for if you find the equation of a line through two points and so on. So what point should I put in? Well, maybe I'll put in this one here because it's quite, it's quite small numbers. I can see that x is going to equal 10 and y is going to equal 2 at this point. Okay, from reading off the graph here and here. So let's put that in. 10 equals... 5 over 2 times, hold on, I've just made a mistake, apologies, quite easy to do this. So y is equal to 2, so it's actually 2 equals 5 over 2 times 10 plus c. So all I've done is I've realised that this is the equation, I just don't know what c is, I've then substituted in for a value of y and a value of x, this thing here. And then I can figure out C because it's going to be 2 equals, and then I can do 10 divided, it's going to be 25 plus C. And that means C is going to be minus 23. And I actually, I do get my final equation. I've not gone into detail on all the inequalities here, um, but I hope I've convinced you that is the equation. That's a challenge one for sure. And the last one. Welcome back to circles. You've got to try and remember the equation of a circle here. Well, I could draw a right angle triangle here. And actually, I've got a value of x and a value of y. Okay, I know what they are, I know. But this distance here is the radius. And I can write down that using Pythagoras that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But if I look, somewhere obvious on the graph for the radius, I can see it's actually equal to 10. So actually the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. And if I want the actual inequality, the region inside, then it's going to be all the area where the radius is less than 10. x squared plus y squared is less than 100. One more. Now, I think those two are tough. Um, they're probably tougher than my so-called challenge, but this does recall an older topic. Have a go at it. So for A, right, first of all, we've got a very similar circle equation and we've got some straight lines. So first of all, Y is less than or equal to X. That means it's below this diagonal line. Y is greater or equal to zero. That means it's above the X axis. And then x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 8 squared. You might have written it as 64. It can equal it as well. That gives me the region inside the circle. It leaves me overall, I should say, I should, actually, technically, I should have an and here. It has to follow all the inequalities, and then I get this little sector. Right, how do we get the area of the sector in terms of pi? Well, I can recognize because the gradient of this is one, it's going to split this quarter of a circle into exactly a half. So it's going to be one eighth of a circle. So here's the answer. It's 32 pi, and that comes from doing one eighth times pi r squared. So one eighth times pi times eight squared. Now, I think I've just made a mistake, haven't I? Um, it's not going to be 32 pi at all. It's going to be eight pi. Apologies. Sorry, so my final answer is 8 pi, because I've got my 64 pi from the r squared, and I'm dividing it through by 8. Finally, what is the perimeter in terms of pi? Let's just check if I did this one correctly. So the perimeter is going to be, if I've got my little sector down here, I'm walking along 8 twice, and I've just got to walk around the arc length. 
and the arc length, well, I know that 2 pi times r is the whole circumference, but now I've got 1 eighth of a circle, so I need to divide 3 by 8, and so I get this length here is just 2 pi, which leaves me overall with 16 plus 2 pi. Okay, just bringing an older topic into this, into this, but hopefully you're okay with that. To finish, what I'd like to do as an extension is to try and enclose a region in a graph. Can you describe it using inequalities? How complex can you make it? Try and make a picture, a bit like some of the ones I did here, okay? You just go, go for it, use your imagination, and then try to write it as inequalities. Well done.